What's up, brother? In today's video, I'm going to be answering one of the questions that came from the comments from another video, which was, how do you take charge and lead your woman in a relationship? And just so you know, before I get into the nitty gritty and the details of this, I truly believe that a lot of my power and what enables me to become the best man that I can possibly become is influenced based upon the woman that I choose. I believe that she is the greatest source of energy that I have and also one of the greatest investments that I can make. One of the things that I realized early on about a good woman is she always gives back to you tenfold what you put in. I give her a house, she makes it a home. I give her my seed, she gives me a family. I give her protection and sustenance and security. She returns that by bringing feminine light and positivity and nurturing and intimacy into my life. I believe that the world was built for women. And as men, it's our responsibility to love and cherish and protect them to the best of our ability. This isn't a message that is commonly spread or shared across social media, especially in a world today where a lot of relationships and the roles of man and woman and just modern dating have become very transactional. And so just to preface this conversation, I want you to realize that my beliefs about dating and relationships are much more, we'll say traditional than what you'll see coming from men today. Now, with that said, I also understand that women, very much like children, need to be given boundaries. I also understand that the nature of a woman is hypergamous. And so what that means is she's always going to be with the man that she feels is the best that she can get. I feel like there is a constant competition anxiety that exists with men. We have to do our best to show up as the best version of ourselves in order to keep the af affection, respect, and admiration of the woman that we choose. But I also believe that the best way to keep a healthy amount of attraction and polarity in a relationship comes from making sure that she feels a certain degree of competition anxiety while also understanding that she is an option. Now, when I say she is an option, I'm not saying that I have the pick of the litter and I'm juggling her and five other women. What I'm saying is that I haven't put myself in a position as a man where I need that woman. I can function as a man and build and be successful and have a fulfilling life without her. But I choose to have her in my life because of the way that she complements it. And I understand that a good woman is a good investment. And she also understands that. And so when we build the foundation of our relationship around those values and understanding that there's roles and responsibilities and respect and boundaries that come with being part of my life, it makes the relationship much easier to navigate. So I'm going to go through some of the things that I think can help you and help most men navigate their relationships and come into a place where they do feel like they're taking charge and taking the lead and stepping into that masculine role. But again, before I get into it, some of these viewpoints may be a little bit controversial. You may not agree, and that's okay. I'm just sharing with you what works for me, what I've learned, and hopefully you can take some of the lessons away from that and apply them to your relationship and see some success. And so, what I'm going to tell you is the very first thing, and no offense, brother, but you're asking the wrong question right out of the gate. How do I take charge and lead my woman in a relationship? I think it's important to understand the very first aspect of leadership comes from being. You know, I talked about this on my YouTube video yesterday where I said, hey, your kids aren't going to listen to what you tell them, they're gonna emulate what you do. If you wanna be a good leader, it starts with being the type of man that she wants to follow. 
And so let's go back to the original context of how you met your wife or your girlfriend or your spouse and what attracted her. The reason why she chose to be in a long-term committed relationship with you was because of, of a couple things and she didn't even realize it. The first is you were the best that she felt she could get inside of her sphere of influence, meaning of all of the other men that she knows, you were the most alpha, for lack of a better term. And I think this is much more subconscious than the former, is she admires you based upon the values that you represent, who you are as a man. When a woman chooses her long-term partner and the man that she wants to settle down and have a family with, she's not just choosing the man, She's choosing what he represents, his virtues, his character, his values, his beliefs. When she sees a man who lives in a place of integrity, has good character, is kind, respectful, courteous, does the right thing, who has an immense amount of work ethic, is a role model. She sees those traits, she sees those qualities and that's what she respects. That's what she admires. And so step one to taking charge and taking the lead in your relationship is you have to become the type of man that A, attracted her in the first place, that made her want to follow you, and or B, that she will want to continue to follow. A lot of times what happens is men, they get the woman and then they think they're done. Like that was the end of it. Understand that your woman chose you based upon not just who you are, but also what you're going to become, where you're gonna bring her and her family and her kids and the life that you're gonna build for them. And a lot of times what happens is guys, they get with the wife or they get the hot girlfriend or whatever the case may be, and then they become complacent the systems of values, the virtues, the traits that attracted her, they stop standing in integrity with. We'll use the gym as an example. When I met her, I was fit. I was in shape. I looked good. I took care of myself. I took pride in my appearance. I made sure to make exercise a priority. And that was something that she really respected about me because it shows how much I care and how important that self-respect is. Then after I got married, my priorities shifted. I stopped taking care of myself. I gain weight. I'm no longer in shape. I start to look a certain way. She follows suit. And now I've led that woman down a path that she no longer admires or respects. I'm no longer the man that attracted her in the first place. And so what she does is she realizes subconsciously that her standards have lowered she's probably lost herself a little bit, had kids, baby weight, the list goes on. And now you've both as a couple collectively lowered your overall standard for the way that you live. She encourages you to continue to live that way for two reasons. The first is because if you raise your standards, that means she has to raise hers, which means she has to step outside of that place of comfort, which she may not be ready for. And the second is because that's what good wives do. I want to be supportive of my husband. I want to be a good wife by making him feel wanted. When in fact, she doesn't realize it, she's doing you a disservice by doing that because deep down, she loses respect for you. She loses respect for the fact that you compromised your values for her. And she doesn't realize that, but internally, she's no longer attracted to you the same way because you're not standing firm in your frame. And so that's the first piece is if you want to take the lead, you have to be the type of man that's worth following. And what that means is you have to ensure that your standards, your values, what you represent as a man and who you are, are non-negotiable. I can't compromise who I am for anyone, even my wife. And she's gonna shit test you when you do that. Oh, you can skip the gym today. Oh, it's okay, you can have this bad food. She's asking you to change for her, but the truth is that's a test. 
This is her survival mechanism to see if you're actually the motherfucker that you say you are. And so if you bend or break or falter under the pressure that comes from her wanting you to take it easier, become a lesser version of yourself, it, it may seem like that's what's making her happy, but deep down, she's losing respect for you. And what happens is, and Richard Cooper talks about this all the time, it's betatization by a thousand concessions. So you compromise your values one time, no big deal. Another time, no big deal. But you do this over a period of years, thinking in your mind that you're making her happy by giving her what she's asking for, when deep down what she really wanted was for you to say, no, that's not what we do here. This is how things are. I'm not compromising myself or my values to accommodate your comfort, your whims and wants. And if you don't like it, frankly, I don't fucking care. And that's a hard conversation to have with your wife because she's going to give you pushback. But understand that this tension inside of a healthy relationship is natural. She's going to test you to see if you're the resilient type of man who is capable of protecting her and her children when the time comes. This is a constant test. Again, this is active hypergamy at work. Except in today's world, rather than her actively going off and just finding someone else to be with because you're too much of a beta, what she does is she monkey branches. So ultimately what this looks like is you attract the woman, you get married, you have kids, you start a family. She betatizes you over time. She loses respect for you. She no longer admires you. And then eventually what happens is she starts stepping into that masculine role, making the decisions in the home, controlling you, domineering. And then suddenly you're no longer meeting her needs, even though the entire time you thought that you were just giving her what she wanted. And then five, 10 years later, suddenly she's seeing somebody else and she takes you for half and takes your kids. This is literally the story of, I would say, thousands of men that I've worked with over the past five to six years. This starts with allowing her to influence you to compromise your systems of values and who you are as a man. The truth is deep down, her core nature is she wants to have a man that she can follow. She wants to be in that feminine space. She wants to be in a place where she's not having to make decisions. She enjoys the idea of having a man solve her problems for her and put her in this place where she feels safe and secure physically and emotionally. And despite what she says, this is really what a woman craves and what she wants more than anything. But the problem is women are such emotionally driven creatures that they need constant reminders and reassurance that they do have that safety, that they do have that security. And so what happens is internally, they're constantly testing you. They're constantly double checking to make sure that you are in fact what you said you were. And so this is all something that happens subconsciously. These women are actively thinking, oh, this is what I'm going to do. But the truth is, this is exactly what happens in like 90% of modern relationships. And so the biggest piece of advice that I have for you is you need to have your life together first. Your priority should be your purpose, who you are as a man, how you're serving the world. Are you living in integrity with your values? Are you the man that you want to be? Are you leading as an example? If you want to take the lead, you need to be the guy worth following. And the way that you become the guy worth following is acquire the skills, the knowledge, the wisdom that's necessary to have that. Look your best. Be in shape. Take care of yourself. That's number one. Number two is once you develop that confidence, and if you haven't already, go back and watch my video from a few days ago on how to build confidence, build that self-confidence. Build a relationship of trust with yourself. Be the guy who you know, deep down, is going to do the things that he says he's going to do. Most women aren't following a man who lacks integrity. If I tell her, 
hey, I'm going to start going to the gym every day, and she laughs, that means she doesn't respect you or your ability to fulfill the commitments that you make. And if she doesn't respect you, that means she doesn't admire you. And if she doesn't respect or admire you, the last thing that she's going to do is follow you. And so the only reason she's with you at that point is because it's what she knows. But I guarantee, without a shadow of a doubt, if a better opportunity came along, she would jump on it. And the worst part about it is most women, they'll rationalize that decision where you're the bad guy because you didn't fulfill her needs. So rather than spending all this time worrying about how you can appease her, or appeal to her, or give her what she wants and keep her or even lead her, what you first need to do is lead yourself. Are you the man that you want to be? Are you fulfilling your purpose? Are you building the life that's worth living? Are you in alignment with your values? Do you stand in integrity? Are you a role model? If the answer to that question is no, then you shouldn't be asking, how do I lead someone else? If the answer to that question is no, you don't have any business starting a family, having children, or getting into a committed relationship with a woman. Because if you truly do have all of those things together and you've got your life right, you're not going to be asking how you can take the lead in that relationship. It's going to come natural for you. Because here's the thing. When I build something, my business, my life, and that something that I built happens to be something that I'm also very proud of. I've invested a lot of time. I've given a big part of my life and effort and energy towards building something. And it's really good because it's in alignment with who I am and it's what I want to build. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of the life that I have, right? And so then when it comes time for me to bring a woman into that life that I built, I don't want to bring somebody in that's going to screw it up. I want to bring somebody into that life that I've built that's going to complement it. Just like I said at the beginning of this video, I want to bring somebody into this life who I can invest into, who's going to give back tenfold and improve the quality of that life even more. The last thing I want to do is bring someone into my life that I've worked so hard to build, who's going to make it harder, who's going to bring more problems and make it more challenging for me to improve. The last thing I want to do is bring someone into my life that I have to deal with, that I have to handle. I don't want your baggage. I don't want your problems. I want you to come into my life and compliment it because I worked really, really hard to build this. And you're getting a ton of benefit by being here because it took me a lifetime to get there. And so when you live in that place where that's the mechanism that's behind the relationship and the foundation that it's built on, the leadership aspect of things comes naturally. The boundaries, they come naturally because it's no longer a matter of how do I lead this woman? It's a matter of self-respect. That's what boundaries are. And so if your wife or your spouse isn't letting you take the lead, it's very likely that the reason for that is because you don't have a track record of being the type of guy who's worth following. Do you stand in integrity with what you say you are? Do you stand in integrity with what you say you're going to do? Are you a role model? Are you a man worth following? Do other men look to you and will they follow you into battle? If the answer is no, then I promise you, your wife has no interest in following you because she doesn't believe that you're the best that she can get. Now, this is a hard pill to swallow for some dudes. And a lot of guys, they put the cart before the horse. They want to go get the woman, the high value woman that they can invest into who's going to give back tenfold into their life. But they don't have anything to invest into her. She doesn't respect you. She doesn't look up to you. And because of that, She'll take the lead because that's what a woman will do. Her goal is to survive, period. She's going to do what she has to do to ensure the best chances of her survival and the survival of her offspring. And if you're not part of that plan, then at best, the only reason she keeps you around is because you pay the bills. And so you've become a glorified ATM machine. And that's when sex becomes transactional or a currency. That's when she becomes naggy. That's when arguments start happening in the relationship. 
That's when she steps on your toes. That's when you have to ask for permission and you become a giant pussy. If you were truly proud of the life that you built for yourself as a man and who you are, you wouldn't let anyone, including a woman, come into your life and boss you around. But the problem is, and this is, in my opinion, the core problem that exists with men writ large is they're not looking for a wife, they're looking for a mom. They're not self-sufficient. They're not capable. They're not able to stay on track and be disciplined. They're not stoic. They make their decisions based upon how they feel and pleasure. They have no self-control. They're weak, soft men who are looking for a woman to pat them on the back for doing the things that they're supposed to do. They're not leaders. They are betas. And so women look at them as betas. Women treat them like betas. The truth is most men today in their 30s and 40s, the only reason they're still in the relationship that they're in is because they're the safest option. They offer the security. They're not exciting. They're not leaders. There's no competition anxiety. That woman is not afraid of you going off and finding a young 20-year-old who's going to replace her. You're not even motivated enough to make the effort to see your own dick, let alone go off into the world and find somebody better. In your mind, she's the best you can get. And most men, when she cheats or leaves, you're groveling, chasing, and crying like a pussy asking what you did wrong. And then you wonder why she didn't want to follow you or let you take the lead. First of all, nobody lets anyone take the lead. Leadership is something that naturally occurs. And so anyway, I can go on the subject all day, but I think the answer to your question is very simple. Be the man that's worth following and understand that becoming a role model, a leader, a husband, a father is a responsibility. It's a privilege. And that means that your job as a man, when you make the decision to become a husband and a father, is to do hard things and develop yourself so that you can be the role model, the example. Most importantly, the one who's capable of protecting and providing for that family you've built. And so if you're not that man, don't be surprised if she goes and finds one because that's what she will do. Anyway, hopefully this message was useful for you. If it was and you feel like there's somebody out there who needs to hear this, despite the fact that it may hurt their feelings, send this to them. You may save a marriage. And gentlemen, I promise you, you don't agree with me. Show this video to your wife. She'll agree. She's going to nod her head the whole time she listens to this video. And this content may trigger most men. I know 10 years ago in my first marriage, it would have triggered me. Because it's a hard pill to swallow. It's a hard message to hear if I'm not the man I know I should be. But I promise you, if you make this change and you start pursuing growth in the way that I talked about for the last 15 minutes, it's going to have a profound impact on the quality of the relationships you have with your wife, your kids, your job, everything else as well. It's not just your relationship we're talking about fixing here. Be the man that you said you wanted to be. So anyway, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same place. Stay vigilant.